Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So last week in my video, uh, I talked a lot about uh, how to script piano samples and basically all of the things that make that hard. Pedal up, pedal down, release triggers, all of the different kinds of sounds that need to be kept track of and triggered at the right moment. I've now taken that work that I did in that video and I've turned it into an actual contact template, which you can download now and basically make a contact instrument uh, out of your piano samples, hopefully without very much scripting at all. It has a bunch of features, uh, handles round robins, release triggers, uh, sustain pedal, stuff like that. So yeah, let's take a look. So when you download the script, this is what the folder is going to look like. It's going to have an NKI, it's going to have a KSP file, which is really just um, a dump of the script that's in the NKI. I'm including that KSP file so that if you have an older version of Contact and you can't open the NKI, you can at least make use of the script. Uh, there's a resources directory, which has uh, some pictures in it. Uh, we'll get to those in a little bit. There's a graphic design template, which is basically just a PSD file so that if you have Photoshop, you can make your own uh, skin for it. And there's a basically empty samples directory. So now that I've shown you the directory structure, let's look at what the template actually looks like when you bring it into Contact. In creating this, I've uh, intentionally used the latest version of Contact 5, not Contact 6. Uh, so you old timers should be able to open this. Okay, so this is what it looks like when you start. And if this looks very familiar to you, uh, then congratulations, you've been watching uh, my videos or uh, the videos of Angus Roberts Carey. Essentially, I took his UI code and I augmented it with all of the stuff that I've been working on for piano samples. Uh, I should mention this code is not based on the code from last week. I actually did away with my reliance on Niels Lieberg's script because I noticed that was having some weird side effects that I didn't really like, so uh, yeah. So let's look at this UI. There are three uh, volume knobs on the top row. Uh, those are for the three types of piano samples, um, the note samples, the uh, release triggers, and the pedal up and pedal down sounds. There's a master volume knob. There's FX1, which is uh, right now it's pinned to uh, a low pass filter. So that's kind of like a tone knob. Uh, and then there's FX2, which right now is pinned to reverb. I'm probably actually gonna change these to say uh, tone and reverb. So if when you download it, these labels look a little different, don't be too surprised. Okay, let's look under the hood. I'm actually gonna open this up in Sublime Text so you can kind of appreciate what's going on. It's a little bit hard to work in uh, the contact editor because it's so small. Uh, so at the top of this, there is a settings block. And this is generally speaking, the stuff that you should be modifying as the person creating like a contact library. This is really the most important stuff. This is where you actually define your groups. As I said up top, this script supports round robins. So in theory, you're gonna have a lot of groups. Most people actually don't have round robins and that's fine, this script works fine even if you don't have round robins. But if you do, this is how you would define them. So anyway, these numbers are actually the group numbers for those types of samples. So now if we go back into contact and we look at the group editor, uh, we can see all these groups. Uh, in fact, I'm actually gonna pop out the browser and we can look in expert and we can actually see the list of groups right here. And as we can see, the first four are notes without pedals. Uh, after that, um, we've got notes with pedals, uh, groups four, five, six, and seven. After that, we've got release triggers, pedal down and pedal up, so on and so forth. And I've included basically blank groups for all of these in the template. That being said, if you don't actually have round robins, you can just uh, truncate these arrays. So you would just say zero and uh, four if you wanted to keep the groups, otherwise you would just do one. You can totally just have a single group. One important thing to note is uh, if you shrink this array, uh, or even if you grow it, you need to change this number here, this uh, four. This uh, number is actually a count of all of the elements in your array. So if you only have one element, you would just do that, one. The only other parameters there are to worry about, there's a control sensitivity that just lets you specify how sensitive the knobs in the UI are. Um, there's a key up release time in milliseconds. Um, you'll probably wanna set that to whatever feels natural for your instrument. And that's pretty much it. Basically, you should just be able to drop your samples into these groups, map them, and then uh, configure this settings block and be done. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's give this a spin, let's make a piano. Okay, so uh, I've closed out and I am going to load this up right now. Just as we discussed, we are actually faced with a whole bunch of groups. Uh, and I'm gonna try to find some samples on my hard drive and uh, yeah, do some mapping. So I'm actually gonna just kind of fake the round robin here. I'm gonna grab all the C zeros of this uh, piano and uh, can do some auto mapping. 
C sharp is going to be round robin two. Oh, the things I'm reduced to. By the way, this technique for getting round robins usually works pretty well. Okay, now we're going to grab those groups. We're going to select all the samples. Move root keys to center. And now we're going to go into each of these groups and just have it expand. Looks so easy when somebody else is doing it, but it's going to take me forever. I'm going to spare you all the misery of watching me map all these groups. I'll meet you back here when I'm done. Okay, so I've mapped all the samples I've borrowed from like three different piano libraries. This is just like a weird uh, Frankenstein piano release triggers from one place, pedals from the other place. But suffice it to say, I have managed to uh, cobble together something uh, for the uh, notes with the pedal down. I basically just put some reverb on the samples I already had, so it, it sounds pretty weird. Uh, but it does work. Uh, I can actually show you the group triggering. Uh, so if I play a regular chord, you can see that uh, round robins are working, and it's not just that round robins are working, they're not sequential, they're random but without repeats. You're never going to get the same order twice, and you're also never going to get the same note twice. Obviously that only kicks in if you have three or more round robins, but um, still pretty cool feature. Another cool thing is you can use as many round robin groups as you want and all the round robin groups are separate for each of the types. So like maybe you only have one pedal down sample, but you have three release trigger samples and you have like two notes with pedals and four notes without pedals. Because each of them is being kept track of separately within the script, uh, you don't need to have the same number of round robins for each type of sample. So that's pretty cool. Now that I've um, put my samples in, I can just back out of here and um, yeah, if I, if I play with these knobs, They control the different types of notes, and I didn't have to do any scripting work at all. Uh, one thing that's worth noting is if you add any groups, you want to make sure uh, that when you add them, you map them to the appropriate buses. The way these knobs at the top work is each of these types of groups uh, is mapped to a specific instrument bus, which is basically just like a, a bucket that you can route audio through uh, within the contact engine. The place where you specify that is in the group editor. Uh, here, I'm going to get rid of the mapping editor. As you can see here, I've got pedal down selected here. And if you go down here to where it says output, it's routed through pedals, which is the name of the third instrument bus. And you can see the instrument buses are down here, main notes, release triggers, and pedals. And they're routed uh, respectively. So if you were to add like five more release triggers, you would want to make sure that they were all routed through the release triggers instrument bus. Another thing that's worth noting uh, is you want to make sure that all of the groups have an appropriate ADSR set. The easiest way to do that is uh, you hit edit all groups uh, and you go down here to the volume modulator and you just make sure that it's set. I generally choose the uh, piano factory preset. Uh, it seems to work really well and uh, yeah, never had any complaints. Okay, I think that's it for the actual main part of the template. Uh, another thing that's worth noting is that the template actually comes with a PSD file, a Photoshop file basically, which makes it pretty easy to uh, modify the skin or create a skin of your own. Let's say, for example, we want to change the background color. Let's say I wanted to use one of the backgrounds that I use for everything. Uh, I'm going to just paste that in there and get rid of the logo. And uh, yeah, maybe I'll uh, call it... Uh Now that we're on a white background, we no longer need these strokes. Obviously, I will leave the aesthetic decisions up to your discretion. That looks fine for now. Um, let's say I wanted to save that and we would template skin modified. And I'm going to replace the one that is in uh, the resources directory. Uh, as you'll remember, the resources directory comes bundled with this. Obviously, if you go back into contact, you're still going to see your old skin. And the reason for that is in the instrument options, we've specified a resource container. And that resource container is resources.nkr. That resources container is this file that lives in the root directory of your sample. Uh, what we need to do is we need to actually recreate that resources file and update it so it contains the new skin that we just made. So all we're going to do is we're going to hit create. By default, for some reason, contact just does not remember the name that you used the last time, even though it's showing it to you right there. Uh, so anyway, I click resources, 
and I hit save, replace, and it says packed picture files three, that's good. One of those three picture files is our new skin. Uh, I'm gonna save this instrument right now. Now, here's an annoying thing. If I back out right now, it won't have updated the skin yet. I actually have to close this and reopen it for it to actually have picked up my skin. Not sure why that is, but it kind of drove me nuts. So anyway, that's it. It took me all of like 10, 15 minutes to put together um, this piano instrument. And all of that time was actually me just like searching around my hard drive, trying to find piano samples to use for this example. So yeah, really, really not hard. Okay, I think that's it. Um, obviously there'll be a download link to the template in the uh, description to this YouTube video. Uh, let me know if you're running into any trouble with it. Obviously this is a V1. I'm sure there will be a V1.1 and a V1.2 as uh, bugs are discovered. If you found this helpful, it'd be really great if you could hit like and uh, subscribe if you have not already. It's the best way to find out when I make new videos. Um, yeah, see you next time.